Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Drawing the Defense. This is actually my first ever video on Luka Doncic somehow, so I hope you guys enjoy this video and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay updated on future videos. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how Luka can deceive defenses into thinking he's passing to one guy in order to manipulate where the defenders go. Inevitably in these examples, he's passing to another teammate who gets the bucket. The most impressive thing to me in these examples is that he's not just a one-trick pony using the same methods every time. In fact, we're going to go over a few examples of plays where he's doing the exact opposite of what he's previously done, so he is truly unpredictable. I'm going to keep this intro short since we all know that Luca is brilliant, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at seven plays in this video, and for each example, I'll show you the play in real time, and then we'll rewind it and break it down. Alright, so let's check out the first play. So in this play we have a pick and roll going towards the center of the floor and the defender goes over the screen so Luca puts the defender in jail by keeping him on his back. So Culver does a good job here of getting back into the play so Luca immediately goes into a pump fake which gets Culver in the air. Luca leans forward and gets into the air which does two things effectively. It gives him time to make the right decision and it moves the corner defender into the center of the floor in order to stop Powell. So Luca fires a no look assist to the corner for a three. All right, let's take a look at the second example. Here we have a sideline handoff with Luca running towards the center of the floor but then he changes direction and runs a sideline pick and roll. But him changing direction forces his defender to trail him on the screen, and it also forces the big to contain his dribble penetration. Additionally, on the weak side, we also see the guys on the wing and in the corner exchange spots. And Luca's eyes make it look like he's going to hit Kleba in the corner for another three, but he hits Tim Hardaway for a three up top instead. Third example. Okay, so this is against a 2-3 zone, and the Mavericks set two back screens for Doncic against the top of the zone so that Luka can get deep into the lane. After setting those screens, you have the screeners popping out to the top of the arc and to the corner. Now what's important here is that Luca remains as patient as possible and he gets as deep into the teeth of the defense as he can before passing out. So you have Jamal Murray responsible for guarding both Tim Hardaway Jr. and Trey Burke, but the spacing here is incredible, so it's a tall task for Murray. What makes it impossible for Murray to defend is that Luca actually looks at Hardaway while passing to Burke. So you just have to hope that Burke misses the shot if you're Denver. Fourth example. This one is a little different because Luca is off ball and we have Hardaway Jr. and Porzingis run a pick and roll, which the Blazers switch. Due to the mismatch, Porzingis immediately tries to post up Lillard, and when Melo notices this, he tries to scram him out of the situation. So Lillard needs to recover to Melo's man, but there's a moment where they're both on Porzingis. Now Luca sees all of this, and he fakes the entry pass to Porzingis, and then he hits Finney Smith on the weak side for a wide open three. Fifth example. So now that we've seen Luca fake the pass to the inside and hit a man on the outside for a shot, 
We know that any NBA defense is aware of his ability to fake that inside pass. But on this example, he actually makes the inside pass. The Spurs trap him on the pick and roll, and Luca waits to make the pass until Kali Stein is deep in the lane. Then he gets in the air, which does two things effectively. It allows him to read the defense, and it also allows him to get off the pass over the length of the Spurs defenders. The Spurs eventually collapse, but it's after the pass is caught and it's too late at that point. Sixth example. Okay, so once again, we have a pick and roll at the top of the floor, and it looks like the Clippers may be trapping here, but they're actually hedging. So, Luca stays patient knowing that Morris will try to recover back to his man. In addition to staying patient, Luca also takes a dribble backwards in order to increase the amount of space Morris has to recover, and it gives him a better window to make the pass to Kali Stein on the short roll. Once Morris starts to retreat, Luca makes his move and penetrates into the teeth of the defense. When Paul George rotates onto Luca, Luca looks at the baseline cutter, which signals to the defense that he's going to throw a lob. This gets Brunson's man out of position to defend him. And even though he trips, Luca still finds the open man for a wide open three. Seventh and final example. As mentioned earlier, what makes Luca so difficult to predict is that he's not a one-trick pony. Previously, we had seen examples of him faking the pass to the inside and hitting the man on the outside, and later that has set him up to make easier inside passes. Also in previous examples, we've seen Luca being very patient, waiting for the defense to collapse to make his pass. But here, we see the opposite, and Luca notices the corner defender sag in even before he runs the pick and roll, so he makes the quick pass for a corner three. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and remember to subscribe for more content.